All right, so we are uh, going over the results of the solution, the results definition for the very same problem, which, what, which is similar to what you're gonna need to do for homework six. So this is the problem, the example problem that we started earlier. So this is the problem that uh, the example problem I'm referring to here, where we had A, B and B, C subject to one kip and it's fixed at A and we have a displacement of 0 0.002 inches at C. And we were looking to find the axial forces, the stresses in A, B and in B, C, as well as the support reaction in A, support reaction at C and the displacement at B. So you would see here, this is uh, set along the same lines as homework number six. So I'm gonna go back to my... Uh, ANSYS model that we did, and we ran the analysis on this. And the very first thing I like to look at is the total deformation. We looked at the total deformation and it looks like our part was doing what we expected. There is this uh, push force to the right at point B that is moving BC to hit the wall and get compressed. And then it's also elongating or stretching the member AB. This is uh, better also seen by using the axial forces. And in order to define axial forces under solution A6, this is where I define my results to look at them. So if you go to solution, a6 here, I looked, I went to the beam tool and I picked axial force. I can also do a bending moment, which we know this part should not have any bending moment, but just out of experimenting, let's pick bending moment. Let's also pick a torsional moment. We don't have any torsional moment. And let's also add a shear force. So these are new definitions for results. We don't need them. I'm just doing it here because we're gonna need that when we move on for others. And I'm trying to show you how to use the beam tool. Uh, later today, I'm also gonna show you how to use shear and moment diagram, how to let ANSYS sketch your shear and moment diagram. So axial force gives me the normal, the internal force in AB and in BC Clearly all AB, which is a two force member, should have the same internal force, is in tension, and it's all in red, having maximum tension of 555.47. BC is all in the dark blue and is in compression, and you see here the maximum compression is minus 444.53. So that's similar to what we got when we calculated that using the stiffness method by hand. I also want to show you that while we are looking at uh, results, I can use this uh, probe feature and go anywhere and click, and this will display the value on the fringe plot, on this colorful plot. And you can see consistently anywhere along AB I'm getting an axial force of 555.47. Likewise, on BC, I'm getting this minus 444.53. So this is one thing. Next, how do we find, uh, while I'm at this, let me solve to show you that the bending moment, torsional moment, shear moment, all should be almost a zero. I should have none of these. So if I click solve, I get here, I can look at total moments, total bending moments, and you see throughout A, B, and B, C is zero. Torsional moment is also zero. The shear force is also zero. In order to look at the reactions as well as displacement at a specific point, as if I'm running an experiment in the lab, I would use the probe feature. So if you go to probe, you get to define a deformation, like a displacement, 
I also can look at a force reaction and a moment reaction. Of course, for this problem, we should not have any moment reaction. Even though <coughs> we used a fixed support, if I define a probe to look at the moment reaction, I can come here and say a moment reaction because I do have a fixed support. And I pick the fixed support and I solve for a moment reaction. So I use probe moment reaction, and let's solve for this moment reaction. So when I solve for my moment reaction, let's look at this. I look here at the details of the moment reaction. I get perfect zero. We should not have any moment reaction, even though we are using the fixed support. And we do need to use a fixed support because otherwise we're gonna have rigid body motions and we are running a static structure analysis where we should have enough constraint to prevent uh, constraints to prevent rigid body motions. Uh, the others that we are going to be using here uh, under uh, probe, I'm going to be using a force reaction, which is what I defined. And when I define a force reaction, <coughs> When I define a force reaction, you can see here, uh, by default, it goes to boundary condition. And this goes to the boundary conditions I defined. So I did put a fixed support. So this fixed support would give me the support reaction at A. Uh, if you have more than one fixed support, it's gonna show fixed support one, fixed support two, and you should see which one you're referring to. So here, if I pick the fixed support, it is showing that the fixed support is at A. Uh, next, if I go like probe and go like uh, force reaction, and now I want to find it at C. At C, we do have uh, 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 a prescribed displacement of 0 0.002 inch. So I will pick here the displacement. This is how I'm getting my reaction. So this here, it says reaction, uh, force reaction four. And of course, I can come here and uh, rename that to call it like force reaction at B and uh, do the same here. And I can uh, right click and choose rename and call it force reaction at C. Oh, yeah, I'm sorry, this was A and the other one was C. Okay, so I'll fix this here, rename, and I'm gonna call this C, right? Now, uh, if uh, I solve for this, looking here, force reaction at A, as we expect, is resisting the 1000 kip and it's going from the right to the left. If I look at the value, it's all along the X axis and I'm getting this 555.47. If you look at C, also going from the right to left to continue to resist the 1000 kip applied, and I'm getting this 444.53. So these are the support reactions. Um, we also used a deformation probe to find the displacement, put here the formation probe, to find the displacement at B. So this is displacement at B, and I'm getting a 0 0.005559. So this deformation probe, I can also rename it and call this displacement. So this kind of give us the, what we got right here, we have the axial force, we have the total displacement at B, we have the force reaction at A, and we have the force reaction at C. The only thing that is left here is to find the stresses in these members, to find the stresses in these members. And uh, I go back to solution, and uh, we are gonna use toolbox. And under toolbox, there is a tool specific for beam, it's called beam tool. And since we are using beam element, I'm going to click this beam tool and it adds to my outline here on the results. This comes, here comes the beam tool. If I expand that, you will notice that the first thing here is a direct stress 
followed by a minimum combined stress and maximum combined stress. And I want to take a minute to explain what these mean. Okay, you may recall when we learned about stresses due to eccentric type of loading. Uh, and uh, more specifically here, if I have a part and uh, I'm cutting right here, and this part is subject to a normal force as well as a bending moment M like this. We call this a combined loading. We have a normal force and a bending moment. And if I want to look at the stress, we say we can use superposition and we start looking at the part subject to the normal force by itself plus the part subject to the bending moment, M. And as a result of a normal force, or really the normal force, is the resultant of these uniformly distributed stresses. So we had here this uniform stress, sigma, where sigma was equal to m divided by a. As a result of the moment, we do have another axial stress. Everything is happening here. This is along the x-axis, so this is not a force. So this is a sigma x, and this is also a sigma x, but this is equal to minus m over y times, or m over i times y, the bending theory. Now, if I apply superposition, I can conclude that the sigma total is equal to m over a plus a minus m over i times y. You will recall this from solids. Now, uh, I want to take this back to ANSYS. In ANSYS, this uh, stress due to the normal force is referred to as direct stress. The sigma total is referred to as combined stress. And this bending axial stress is referred to as bending stress. We look here under uh, beam tool. If I go right click on it and go insert beam tool stress, you see here I can also add a maximum bending and I can also add a minimum bending stress. So these are the five different types of stresses I can be looking at. And of course, I'm going to tell you what's the difference between maximum and minimum. So if I go back here, this uh, sigma x is the bending so we can say that the combined stress is the sum of the direct stress plus the bending stress and it's important really to understand what you're going to be reading out of ANSYS so let's go back to ANSYS and uh, in uh, this case here for this problem, For, uh, for the problem that we are doing in ANSYS, 
we of course expect that we only have normal forces. So if I look at my stresses, and this is also true for your homework six, we are only going to see direct stresses. I expect the bending stress to be zero because I don't have any bending moments. And if the bending stress is zero, then my combined stress is going to be the same as the direct stress. I do not get any contribution from this bending stress component. So let's look here and start looking now as we understand the meaning of these direct stress, maximum combined stress, and maximum bending stress. By the way, there is a minimum and there is a maximum because as uh, you recall, for uh, bending moments, if I look at the stress distribution for a positive bending moment, we had tension at the bottom and it goes to zero at the neutral axis and we got compression at the top. So in a way there is a max, there is a sigma max tension and there is a sigma min or compression at the top. So you can look at either the maximum value or the minimum value, that's why they give you a maximum and minimum. And uh, of course, um, if we have um, uh, one of these uh, symmetric section like a rectangular section, usually the max and the minimum are gonna be equal in magnitude, but of course opposite in direction. Again, in this case, I only expect direct stress, and this is where you would get your normal stresses in the part. So let's solve here. So if I go like solve and look at direct stress, you look here, the first one, we had a 555.9 kip divided by a 0.1 square inch of an area. Indeed, I get 5,559 PSI positive as my normal or direct stress in AB. So if I want to report the stress in AB, even if I come and use my probe, check anywhere, the stress will be the same in AB. It's a two-force member. And if you look at BC, it's all in negative blue. And if I look here, I'm getting compression of 2,965.9 PSI. So this is how you would find your normal or axial stress in AB and in BC. Does uh, that answer the question in regards to homework six? Yes, it does, thank you. Very good. Uh, so I was uh, referring here to the axial forces and I said, when I did my axial forces, I did just simply define an axial force and it uh, by default goes to all line bodies. I did not have to be specific about AB and BC. If you want to be specific, you can. I can come here. Again, I don't think there is a need even for your homework. I can just simply go when I'm defining my solution. When I go to... Um, my beam results, axial force, you see here, I can select a specific body. So I can come here and select BC, for example, and apply. And then uh, I solve, and uh, in this one here, I selected AB. So if I uh, select here and I solve for that, I'm gonna get BC by itself and it's showing only the compression. Uh, I think this is fine. I can show the whole part and uh, I can use probes if I want to be specific at certain areas or certain locations and you see all the numbers were displayed. All right. Any more questions on that? Do you think this answers? I think this should answer everything re re regarding homework number six. But if you still have uh, other questions, I'll be happy to take them before we move on.